Welcome to RV Squared. I'm Steve Vance. We all have something in common when it comes to RV travel, and that is that we plan our trips. Some of us spend a lot of time and a lot of excitement planning. Some of us stress about it. But the bottom line is, most of us plan our trips in some way, shape, or form. I get asked quite a few times, what are the tools that I use to plan those trips and to navigate. So today, we're gonna dig in and I'm gonna show you what I use. So let's dig in. All right, let's get started. Now, by no means is this an exhaustive tutorial on how to use RV Trip Wizard but I'm just gonna walk you through some of the features that I really like. And again, there's plenty of resources online, tutorials that will take you through a lot more in-depth features. But basically you start out with RV Trip Wizard. You can make a new trip. And when you make a new trip, in this case, we're just gonna call it test trip. You can specify what day you're leaving or just leave it blank to be open-ended. So in this case, that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm going to say that we're gonna leave from San Diego, not the home address. And what's nice is RV Trip Wizard will automatically look at places of interest in San Diego. You can click it in general, or you can go to a specific resort. In this case, I'm going to say I'm leaving San Diego's uh, <clears throat> Sun Outdoor Resort. So we're gonna start here, and it builds the map for you. Now look over here on the left panel here, the trip panel. This is what's really powerful about RV Trip Wizard. It'll pre-populate your default settings, but it gives you the chance to override them on the fly. Now I'm gonna set this trip status to active rather than tentative, because that'll allow it to synchronize to my devices like the RV Life app in the iPhone. The next thing I wanna show you here is you can plug in your individual RV info. As I already talked about, I've got 13 foot 3, 45, 50 to 90,000 pounds, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down. And if for some reason you want to override any of these features, you can. But in general, these will stay pretty much fixed. The next panel shows you the routing. And again, they're going to pretty much stay fixed along the way. Even if you want to scroll down here, you can change the average hours of day that you want to drive. Let's say, for example, you're going to just make some short legs at maybe six hours, or let's say you're really going to push hard this particular trip and go eight hours, right? Or you can just kind of cut it in the middle and say, I want to show seven hours a day. Now, again, this applies to the driving radius, which and you'll see in the big map, this advanced driving radius is going to be really powerful to use. The next panel is your camping expenses. I just leave that alone. I don't really use that. Okay, so what I normally do is I like to do the endpoint next. Now, if I knew the exact trip that I was taking and I knew every single point along the way, I might plug those in individually. But this is why I like RV Trip Wizard. I'm going to come up here and say, let's say, for example, I want to go to the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. And I'm going to type in Smoky Mountains, and I'm really not sure of what or where it is or where I want to stay. And I just kind of scroll down through here and kind of look, hmm, I don't think anything's popping up. And then I start typing in more like Great Smoky Mountains. And aside from misspelling it, it helped me out. Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And I click that. Now, it's not going to add anything yet. But if you look over here to the right, this research panel is the big, powerful section of RV Trip Wizard. Now, these buttons down here are my filters. And if you tap this button up here, you'll notice that the filter groups will drop down and you've got anything from the types of parks, you've got park ratings. I like to use four stars because that chokes down the amount of returns that you can see at one time. Otherwise, it gets pretty cumbersome on the display. Park features is something I use every time. Um, depends on if I'm going to do a bump and run overnight, whether I want to pull through or not. A lot of times I'll leave pull through deselected. But let's say, for example, we want to be a little bit more particular, pull through, and this indicates that in this area, there's going to be nine resorts that offer pull through. Pets, again, if you want to bring the uh, buddy with you, you want to click pets allowed. In our case, we like a big rig access. Um, hookups, 
we normally take full hookups all the time. Sometimes if I want to do a bump and run, I might just put 50 amp on there just to give a, a quick hit at night, recharge the batteries, and maybe run some air conditioners. But in this case, we're going to leave full hookups on. And you've got amenities that I don't use much, park pricing. Um, if you want to type Good Sam, KOA, Passport America, that'll further limit your selection, but I normally don't use those. So we have down here, big rig, pull through sites, pets allowed, full hookup, and four stars. Now, if we're just gonna be going along the way in selecting you know, overnighters, I'm gonna leave this criteria set just like this. If it doesn't reveal something in that local area, the first thing I will do is I'll uncheck four stars. Now, you'll notice that in the panel in the center, that's the map panel, there's nothing showing because up here, I've got the campground selector turned off. It just makes navigation and selection a little bit cleaner when you're looking around for a particular area, whether I wanna zoom in or zoom out. It just makes things a lot cleaner because you'll see right now when I click the box, icons will start showing up. Now, anytime you move the map around, you wanna refresh it by this search for POIs and it'll kind of illuminate things in the map here. So let's go down stream here a little bit and let's zoom out and see where we are. All right, well, here's Gatlinburg. And then down here, oh, here's Pigeon Forge. Now, maybe I've heard something about Pigeon Forge. So I say, well, you know what? I'm gonna focus in on this particular area. And let's say, for example, I don't wanna click on each one of these individually, but I wanna see them all collectively. This is the power of RV Trip Wizard. Again, it's pulling in the information from campground reviews. Now, if I come up here to the research panel and click show parks list, watch what happens. This is what's really great. And I can sort this by rating in the descending order or the ascending. So now here, I've got the best places listed first. Now I can scroll down here. And as I scroll down, these icons were, will bounce. So you'll look here, gateway to the Smokies is bouncing and it's right down here. And that's four and a half stars with 10 ratings. And I can look up and down this list. And if I want to get more information on a certain campground, I can either click on it. I see Camp Rivers Landing. It gives you a thumbnail panel that shows you the hookups, the sewer, the big rig, the toiletry, Wi-Fi, dogs allowed. And you can actually click on park details. Now, again, this will bring up information based on campground reviews. And this is what's super powerful. As you go along here, you can click on different pictures and kind of get an idea what you're going into. And if it doesn't look like the grounds are very good or very flat, or if it looks too crowded for you, maybe it's something you want to pass on. So this may not look exactly like what I want. So I might click on here at this Good Sam's Pine Mountain RV and click on that. And as I scroll through, I say, yeah, this looks more like what I want. And then maybe check one more out. Now, let's say, for example, we go up to uh, Margaritaville. And that's the place we've heard about. So in this case, let's say we want to use Camp Margaritaville as our end destination. I'm going to use this button right up here to add to the trip. And it'll automatically drop in this stop to the last stop of our trip. Just leave it like that. And then we're gonna say we're gonna stay there for four nights. And you can add any comments you want in here, whether you wanna make a note of what site you're going to, or you know, you can even do the reservation number in there if you wish to. Uh, locked date of stay would apply to if you knew the actual dates that you were going to stay there. And I use that all the time. If we've gotten a reservation with confirmation and we've locked that in, we know for sure that we can't modify this trip that would overrun this particular leg. So at any rate, let's leave that unchecked, add this to our trip. Now, if I come up here and hit show entire trip, the whole section from start to finish is shown with 2,243 miles with 34 hours of travel. And now what you can do is really powerful. I'm gonna drop the research panel away and I'm going to show you that if I click on Sun Outdoors, all right, and I'm going to zoom out, you'll see this shaded green with a dark green border. Here's the power of the routing engine 
in RV Trip Wizard. It's automatically calculated that seven hour timeline. So I can see I can stretch past Phoenix and I'm going to say I want to stay right around south of Flagstaff. Now I can go past Flagstaff, which would, if I click on here, tell me I'm going to go 526 miles. And if I feel that's a little too long, I'm going to say no, maybe go back here. Now this is off the road a bit and it's Rancho Sedona. Now if that doesn't appeal to you, if it's a little bit too far off the beaten path, come back down a little bit more. And again, if I want to zoom in tight to this particular area and jump my research panel out, all these different campgrounds will be in this panel that are in the view of my map. And that's pretty cool because I can kind of jump around and see what's dancing up and down. And if I say, um, Camp Verde, Distant Drums RV Resort, that looks pretty appealing. I can click on that and bring up the panel. It looks like a pretty well laid out park. Oh, that's really nice. And that's going to be super easy. I like that. I'm going to add this to my trip. I'm going to bring it in after the very first leg, after Sun Outdoors, and we're going to do a one-nighter there and just type in one night. Now, this starts to build the trip out from stop to stop. If it gets a little bit too cluttered, just turn off the campground selector and you can start to see the trip being built. We just put in that first stop there just before Flagstaff. Since that line is highlighted, you'll notice it's an, again highlighted a seven hour drive. So it becomes real easy to just double click, zoom in, and now I'm just out of Albuquerque. I can turn on my campground selector here and now I'm going to start to see some campgrounds pop up along this area. And if nothing shows around here, I can always go a little bit further to Tucumcari. That's 549 miles. Again, you can, you can pick that or you can do a little bit shorter perhaps and come back here to Klein's Corners. So it's just real simple, real easy. You can just come along here and right from this panel, you can click Add to Trip give it a one night and say it's going to go after distant drums. So I just build my trips out this way. It's just a super easy way. I love being able to access the campground reviews data. Um, it's not perfect, but I think it's the most comprehensive database going out there. They have much more reviews than pretty much anything out there. If you remember, there was this panel that talked about the um, actual RV information and the fuel warnings as to multiple fuel warnings. What that is, is that's based upon the tank of fuel that you started upon being full, in this case 200 gallons. It will give me an icon right here of how far I'm gonna be able to go on that full tank of fuel. And again, another one will be over here, almost, well, it looks like pretty close to our destination. So it tells me I only need two tanks of fuel to get from point A to point Z on this trip. Now, that doesn't really fly because I don't like to stretch it that far and most of us don't. So you can always zoom in. It just gives you a little icon view to say, I need fuel well before that. So maybe I'm gonna come down here and since I have my TA and Petro and Love Travel Stops selected in my points of interest, look what it does here. It says right in here, there's a TA and I say, you know what? That's perfect. I like it. I'm going to click more details and say I'm going to add this to my leg and it's going to be right after, in this case, distant drums. Okay. And it makes it really, really easy. And this is a flexible panel over here. You can always change your order. If you blow it, you can always um, reorder them. You can come in here and say, I want to show me turn by turns. You can see uh, directions. You can print those directions out if you want to back up. You can send this trip to your friends or family. We can print this out each time, which we like to do. We can email it in the same format. But if you want to print it, it's really nice because when you select this print view, it gives you a, a thumbnail map, but it gives you every step of the way, including arrival and departure, how many miles, how many hours. It gives you the cost, the coordinates, the website, the address, and the phone number. It's just an invaluable tool. Before we leave, we usually print this out and lay it on our counter at home here so people will know exactly where we are at any time during the trip. So there you have it. 
I think you get the overall gist of why this is such a popular tool for so many. Okay, I never said that you weren't gonna fall asleep. If you haven't been convinced already, maybe this will convince you. I wanna show you another big deal. I told you that RV Life owns RV Trip Wizard, Campground Reviews. They also have a companion app. Now, the companion app on the iPhone synchronizes to the web. Now, you can't plan your trips on the iPhone, but the iPhone takes that data from your trip planner on the browser and it synchronizes it on their server so that you can call it up on your iPhone. Now, you'll see here, I'm going to refresh and boom, you'll see our test trip is there. So if I click on that, it shows the test trip and in this particular case, it shows you sun outdoors, it shows you the stops in between, it shows you the date, the cost, the rating, it basically gives you all that trip data synchronized right over your phone. And then the icons on the side, if you're a, let's see, if you're the pro level subscriber, it gives you the ability to download the maps offline, so in case you lose internet connection. It also gives you RV GPS guidance. So it's pretty cool. Okay, I do that because I like to see the trip laid out. I have to tell you, I do not like, as of right now, the GPS RV navigation built into this app. It's, it's grossly anemic compared to the Garmin. So I use the iPhone for a backup mapping source. And by backup, I mean either Google Maps, Apple Maps, or sometimes Waze. I wanna pull in a completely separate map source um, even if it is specific for auto, you know, it's hard to beat Google Maps, Apple Maps, and Waze in terms of live traffic data. So I like to have that kind of going as a backup. So this is where it gets great. Let's say your co-pilot wants to look at the route or wants to add new things in the route. No problem. Because the iPad runs a mobile browser, you can fully edit your trip right on the iPad. And here's my test trip, and it loads everything in. And there we go. Now, I can look at the trip, edit the trip, even change destinations, stops, et cetera, et cetera. Or I can go to the map and hit show entire view. And again, it's a mobile browser. So you can do everything with that trip that you could do on your home desktop. It really works well. Again, here's your research panel, your map panel, your trip panel. It's just really a great tool. That's one of the reasons why I like carrying an iPad with me, is it makes it really super simple to edit your trips. Basically the exact same thing on a laptop. So if you're traveling with a laptop, you can do all your route planning right off of the laptop. Um, it'll synchronize over to your phone. It's all automatic. Hopefully this gives you enough to actually say, hey, that looks pretty cool and check it out because I do feel that this is about the best planning tool. So I hope this intrigues you. I hope this gives you something to look at. I'm open for comments, criticisms, suggestions, questions. And as always, thank you for following my channel, subscribing, clicking the like button, clicking the bell icon to make sure you get notifications. And I hope you have safe travels and stress-free planning.